As you learn about the narcissistic pattern, it's also wise to reflect on the much healthier alternatives. Now below, you're going to find a link to my new extensive course called Ready, Set, Connect. It addresses both the mindset and the skills involved in gratifying relationships, and I hope you'll find it to be quite therapeutic. The more you learn about the phenomenon of narcissism, there are times when you have to come to terms with some truths that you just don't want to have to come to terms with, but there it is. And, and I'm wanting to talk with you about that today, especially about the fact that narcissists, as they go deeper and deeper down the spectrum, can have a form of darkness on the inside that they're drawing upon that keep them from being able to be anything other than impossible. You know, from time to time, we do hear stories. I hear stories of testimonials of people who have had that bent, but they've been able to contain themselves. You know, healthy individuals realize, you know, I can have some of those characteristics of narcissism. I can have that control and I can want to try to be superior. And sometimes I'm selfish and, and insensitive with empathy being in low supply. But healthy individuals, when they see that, they do something about it. They own it and they recognize that there's this thing called maturation and growth and actualization. And so they go into that space in such a way where they keep it at a very minimal kind of containment and it doesn't run away from them to the extent that their healthy ingredients can come out to the forefront. The further down the spectrum of narcissism that you go, then it does become more evident that that capacity for adjustment just, it, it doesn't show up to the extent that it, it illustrates that a form of darkness has completely enveloped and we can say ensnared or captured that individual's personality. And when we say that, uh, that they are, uh, they have a sense of darkness, there are times when we'll even refer to words like evil. And we'll acknowledge that these are individuals who are completely entrenched. They are in, in the grip of their darkness. They, uh, they are immovable. They're just simply not going to change and adjust. And the person who's going to pay the price is going to be you. So it's going to be necessary for us to identify how an individual can be caught in this full dark mode of narcissism because the more you're able to see what's going on inside of them, then the more you're going to be able to determine how you're going to most wisely respond. Now, keep in mind, they're going to want you to think that you're the problematic person when in fact, no, you're the individual on the stage that they're unloading their pathology onto. So let's, uh, let's see if we can identify some of the primary indicators that an individual is caught in what we might refer to as a narcissistic darkness. There's a darkness that's completely enveloped them. Now, the first thing I'm going to mention is these individuals can have what I would refer to as a chronic sense of, of condescension toward you. Now, we know that the whole pattern of narcissism involves an attitude of superiority where they hold themselves up above you but when I talk about this chronic condescension, I'm talking about that and then some. They are inclined to hold you in very strong disdain. They're, they're inclined to hold you in strong contempt. Your differences from them aren't just different to that, uh, that person enveloped in their darkness, your differentness means that there's something deeply defective about you. And then this legitimizes in their mind, their further mistreatment of you. Now, along with that, uh, they, they uh, along with the condescension and contempt, then anger is something that they're going to just uh, maintain. It doesn't take a whole lot of, of time before they're going to reveal that they, uh, they can be prone toward outbursts of agitation and irritability. Their anger is just one wrong move from you away from coming out. And so they can be openly critical. 
and they can offer a lot of derision, insults. You can be on the uh, the receiving end of rages. They hold grudges. There will be no forgiveness, which uh, which is part of the uh, moving on from anger. That just simply doesn't happen. And so that's going to be a part of this uh, sense of darkness that they live with. Now, there's another element. You, you've heard me say on many occasions that I believe it's so necessary for us to acknowledge the freedom of each person to choose for himself or herself who they're going to be. That's, that's just uh, you know, psychology 101. To a person that's enveloped in this darkness, your desire to choose, your desire to be free is simply invalid. Uh, you're not enlightened enough as far as they're concerned. You're not trustworthy enough as far as they're concerned. So your freedom as far as they're concerned is a menace. And of course, it gets in the way of them having the uh, the dominance over you. And so let's take it another step. Another element as part that's part of their darkness is they want control, yes. But they want more than just control. Uh, they want to invalidate your freedom, and then in its place, they want their dominance. And that being the case, there's going to be a lot of shutdown communication when you try to speak to them, when you offer a thought or a perspective. It's like, uh uh-uh, you can't do that. And so they'll they'll, they'll, uh, invalidate you very quickly. There's no room at the table for your perspective or your feelings or your opinions. It's like, I have declared end of discussion. That's part of that darkness. Now, as they treat you in this very controlling and superior kind of way, then they become impervious to whatever pain they might generate in you. And when we talk about the pattern of narcissism, we refer to very low levels of empathy. In this darkness, it's like the empathy just, it's non-existent. Uh, your uh, difficulties in life that are due to their actions, just they don't care. If you struggle and if you say, hey, pay attention to what's going on here. This isn't working for me. Then as far as they're concerned, it's like, you know, that may just be collateral damage. If you have a hurt or if you have pain or you have anxiety, it's just sort of the way it is too bad. And so there's a, a, a calloused attitude toward whatever it is you need or feel or how you uh, might want to proceed in a better kind of way. It's like, I do not care. It does not register. Now, also, along with this, you'll notice that these people who are enveloped in this form of darkness that I'm talking about, truth is simply a toy to be played with. Uh, basically, logic <laughs> means nothing to them. Uh, their, their agenda means everything. And if you come along and say, well, there's this logic that you need to acknowledge. It's like, nope, uh, <laughs> it doesn't fit my, my narrative. Or if you have evidence that implies that they may be off base, it's like, doesn't matter to me. Now, that being the case then, since they toy with truth, then uh, when you point out, you know, what you're doing is not good. What you're doing is improper. There's a meanness that you bring to the equation. Now, you may not want to say that out loud, but to their mind, it's like, if they have meanness, They'll rationalize it because they toy with the truth. It's like what you define as meanness, I, the narcissist, defined as necessary. And so their extra measure of meanness is rationalized. And then uh, taking it a little bit further, they'll they'll sometimes even uh, take their meanness and dress it up as virtue. And these are the self-righteous people. Now, whether we're talking in politics or whether we're talking in religion or just uh, somebody that has to be right, it's like, no, uh, what you interpret is wrong. I mean as good. This is good for you. And so they'll actually cloak themselves with virtuous motives when in fact, no, that's part of that lying and that uh, toying with truth. Now, do you see what I'm talking about when I say that there's a a special uh, form of darkness that these people operate with. And uh, it's necessary for you to understand that these elements are an outpouring of that. And it's also important for you to understand that uh, whenever you try to plead your case, 
Whenever you ask persuasive questions, like why would you do something like this? Or can't you see A instead of B? Not only does that not work or not only does that not help, but it actually can, quote, inspire them or invigorate them to continue on and to double down on their efforts, keeping in mind that part of this darkness means that they have a deeply underdeveloped conscience. So as we recognize all that I'm saying here, uh, let's, let's also acknowledge the very best thing that you can do is disengage. You hear people like me say, uh, you go no contact and, and sometimes you can't go no contact, but you d definitely don't want them in your inner circle. You don't want these individuals to be the ones that you look to for your sense of well being. But instead, I'm hoping you can ask, if I know that there's a darkness here, what are my better alternatives? I'm going to live into that. And you know that I strongly encourage you to go towards healthy characteristics. You know, the opposite of darkness is light. And when we talk about light, we're talking about showing people the way towards DRC, dignity, respect, and civility. I, I mean that down to the core of my being. That's what we want to be. The, uh, if we say that there's an evil element, I want to be a person that stands for good. That's just who I am. If they're exploitive, I want to be the kind of person that's conscientious. If they hold people in contempt, I want to hold people in compassion. If they want dominance, I want to find a, an, uh, a place of equality. If they want control, I want to create an atmosphere of openness and freedom. Those are traits that are lost on the narcissist who has this darkness that they're drawing from on the inside. Uh, but the bottom line is, I'm hoping you can say, um, I, I'm able to live a, uh, an effective life if I'm also getting pulled into their darkness with them. I want to be effective and I want to have a life of meaning. You, it may be that because of your exposure to their dark traits, you'll have some scars. You may have some hurts. You may have to take some detours. You may have some scenarios or circumstances in life that you are going to have to just learn to accept and they're not what you want, but there it is. But the one thing that we can say is that despite all of the darkness that a narcissist may be drawing upon, they cannot uh, uh, match or duplicate your good character. It's, it's sad that they can't, but I'm hoping you hold on to your good character. And um, bottom line is I'm hoping you can find uh, people that can appreciate what that means and apply your decency in those places with folks who say, I'd like to join you in that. I hope that discussions such as this can give you some good insight with respect to what you're dealing with. I know it can be difficult at times, but uh, we're here on Team Healthy. We're pulling for one another. Uh, if you've not already hit the subscribe button, I would encourage you to do so. Hit the like button too, because that helps our, our algorithms. And uh, we'll keep more videos coming in your direction. If you have a need for therapy, and many times as you're trying to deal with this, it's good to have somebody that can help you unpack this. We have a sponsor, the people at betterhelp.com, uh, that can uh, can assist you. I've received good feedback. Some of you actually send me notes saying how much it's helped. Uh, and so if you want, we have a link below that will take you to a whole team of licensed professional therapists that you could uh, select from. I would strongly encourage you to do that, do that if that's a necessity. We also have my therapeutic courses, uh, the, and these are uh, courses with multiple videos and uh, teaching documents. It's like signing up for a class. And so it, it requires a great deal of work. We have Ready, Set, Connect uh, about uh, connection skills. This is me about boundaries, free to be about finding yourself despite the controllers. We have uh, webinars now that we're, uh, that we've been presenting and will be, uh, uh, they'll be available to you even after they've been presented. We have my books. We have our, uh, our uh, podcast, my uh, Surviving Narcissism podcast, our website, many resources. And I hope you're able to take, uh, uh, to avail yourself to all of that. I know it's difficult when you think that these are individuals who are enveloped in their own darkness. I hope that you can be a person of light and I hope you can be a person of goodness and decency because in the end, that's what's going to be necessary for you to live as an individual who stands for peace.